Arkane's bridge scene changed dynamics for multiple characters and served as a turning point for them, defining the rest of their stories, influencing their development severely. It also served as a parallel between a scene that we once saw before in that very same location. Bridge events geographically occurred exactly between Piltover and Zorn, serving as a middle ground, location for some of the characters both from the upper and under city finally confronting. To Caitlyn, moments on the bridge led to her finding out Marcus has betrayed both her and the enforcers he was supposed to lead and represent. He sabotaged her career, her entire investigation by pretending to not treat it seriously, by diminishing it, telling her it's not her job to pursue the leads, by covering up for both Silco and Jinx and going as far as willing to actually kill her. It was also the moment when she left the gemstone, which means her, her entire Undercity effort has been for nothing. For Marcus, it was the end of his morally grey road, an unfinished story just like his very last sentence. He did not get a proper closure, nor did he get a chance at redemption. Because you surely cannot call a redemption his hesitation before possibly shooting Caitlyn. He died not being able to say goodbye to his daughter and not being able to fix all the mistakes he has made which led to Grayson's death. He died following pointless orders from both sides not entirely agreeing with either. To Echo, it was a moment when he had to confront Jinx. A person he possibly used to have a crush on as a kid, which League of Legends lore suggests. But most of all a childhood friend, which he now considers an enemy. He also took his very first steps towards Piltover, which eventually might lead to him becoming much much closer to, to it. As it is, Echo serves as a beam of hope for the Undercity, having created a hideout with actual nature in it free of Zone's toxicity and pollution, proving how it could potentially be had the Undercity been given a chance by the Council. Bridge confrontation also directly led to him meeting Heimerdinger. Just as Heimerdinger, Echo reached a helping hand to Piltover, a hand that has been refused. I wanted to offer my assistance to the citizens of the Undercity, but it seems I'm unwelcome. We're having the exact same day. Heimerdinger, after being rejected by the Undercity, found Echo by the river, next to a boat. A symbol of connection between both sides, just as important as the bridge. Echo was not hiding deep in the Undercity, he was just by the shore with Piltover within the reach of his hand. His journey towards peace, towards being given a chance, has begun right there. Jinx, during the bridge confrontation, most of all has felt betrayed. When she entered the location, she was humming the very same song she was singing when her parents died on this bridge in Act 1. Most crucial moment defining her entire personality, perhaps a moment that initiated her mental disorders. That situation was just as important. It's mostly because she felt like her sister abandoned her. She blamed Caitlyn for it. An enforcer that suddenly found herself in uh, vice favors, despite the fact that the enforcers killed their parents. She demonized her and saw her as the reason why Vi, in her head, chose someone else over her, when it shouldn't even be a matter of choice. On that bridge, she opened fire towards not only Caitlyn, which given her disorders would have been somewhat understandable, she opened fire towards her own sister. She either did it knowing Vi can protect herself, or she actually did choose to hurt her, possibly kill her. Which leads me to Vi's turning point, maybe even a point of no return. The point of no return represents the precise spot in a story where the major character takes a new and unplanned direction. They make a decision or take an action that is irrevocable. It forever alters their situation, and there's no turning back from it. Vi, that day, on that very bridge, left the Undercity behind. Perhaps unintentionally, but probably forever. Undercity had nothing to offer for her anymore. Everyone she cared for is either dead, damaged possibly beyond repair, or has betrayed her. Wanda died. Milo and Klegor died. Her parents passed away. So did Benzo. Jinx, by opening fire towards her, proved she partially reached her point of no return. I thought, maybe you could love me like you used to. Even though I'm different. 
which is something I'll discuss in a separate video. Echo, her only childhood friend that's still alive, found himself at the very same path as Vi, a path that leads to Piltover, possible peace. Except for him, it was a boat that represented it. For Vi, it was that bridge. Episode's confrontation brought Vi back to a similar scenario that previously happened to her in that very location, but also to an almost identical situation that happened elsewhere. Vi found out her sister is capable of going as far as willing to kill her, as willing to kill Caitlyn and Echo, that she's filled with bitterness, that she's okay with both murdering and with Silco's way of thinking. As a result, symbolically, on that bridge, Vi yet again left a family member behind by having to turn and walk away. And she shouldn't be judged for doing so. She gave her sister every chance she could to find powder within Jinx. She reached out to her. In fact, even after these events, she kept giving her chances. It's just that at this point, she was no longer part of the Undercity. Crossing the bridge with Caitlyn means no less than that she found herself on the other side. Maybe not quite yet belonging as much as actual Potovians, but she did leave Zone behind both symbolically and literally. Years ago, when Vi's parents passed away, she had to walk the same steps except on that occasion she was walking away from Piltover, leaving it behind for years to come. And it was Vander that took her away from it, knowing at the time it's the safest solution. It wasn't a choice she made, it was made for her. Since that moment on, Vander, Powder and Vi were creating a family, a glimpse of happiness in otherwise gloomy zone. When that disappeared, there was nothing much left in Undercity for Vi to hold on to. Her years in Stillwater were neither here nor there. It was almost like a purgatory. Vi came out more motivated than ever with very strong moral grounds, but not quite belonging anywhere. It feels like Zorn, controlled by Silco, betrayed her. And it was very well presented by actions of a man who was once defended and saved by Vander, but who also decided years later to betray Vi. Which no doubt influenced her decision to move on as well. Finding herself yet again on that bridge, except now with Caitlyn and not with Vander, she took a direction opposite to the one she has taken years ago, and this time Vander was replaced by Caitlyn. Caitlyn was in fact previously compared to Vander. Despite it all, I can tell. You have a good heart. You've got a good heart. She said the very same words as he did. She noticed Vi's good heart and intentions. Caitlyn is now very much crucial in Vi's life. She's giving her a sense of comfort and security, which was only given to her twice before. By her mother, which Caitlyn was also compared to through Vi's hallucinations, and by Vander, who said the very same words as Caitlyn did, proving they both so right for Vi's cold and angry exterior. Bridge scene also paraphrased the moment when Silco took Powder in in episode 3. Vi, in a moment of anger, grief and desperation, after having lost Vander, rejected Powder, blamed her for what happened, went as far as hitting her. It led to Powder's moment of vulnerability, which Silco immediately used, perhaps in a moment of weakness, perhaps as part of his revenge towards Vander. He took Powder in and transformed her into Jinx right in front of Vi's eyes. She wanted to go back. She wanted to help her, to release her from no doubt evil men's embrace. But she couldn't. She was taken away by Marcus and locked down in Stillwater prison against her will. Starting many years of gruesome loneliness, not being able to help Powder, to find her and get her back. While on that occasion the choice to leave was not made by her, it was made for her by Marcus. After the bridge confrontation, Vi chose to leave and walk in the opposite direction. Jinx opened fire towards her, in an act of hatred caused by her own conviction that Vi does not care for her anymore. Beginning of Vi's journey, decision to walk away from Piltover was made by Vander without a doubt to protect her. That day, she left her parents on that bridge. She left a chance of peaceful childhood behind. Later on, after Vander's death, she was taken away from Powder against her will because of a decision made by Marcus. Whether it was a sign of his guilt or a way to gain an asset for himself, it doesn't matter much. 
She couldn't have changed what happened to her. This time though, she did choose. She chose a way towards the upper city. First place she ended up in was Caitlin's house. In there, she opened up for the very first time since she was released from prison. She instantly changed, she could rest. She also met Jace and now, apart from Echo, her strongest personal connections lead not to Zone but to Piltover. In the League of Legends lore, Vi is part of the Enforcers. She's working with the Wardens to keep peace in Piltover Crest. She's cooperating with Caitlyn. She's Piltover's finest and that's pretty self-explanatory. It doesn't mean that she walked away from Jinx for good though. It only means that for once in her life she actually made decision for herself. A decision that was has to be made and not by someone else. Thanks so much for watching. Do check out my other arcane video essays. Stay safe. This is Ola from Stop Me O channel. Bye.